Well, I'm delighted today to welcome Brendan onto the channel. Brendan, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. No, we appreciate you coming on. Now, you, you, you're in you're in Western Australia, in the greater sort of Perth area. Yeah, just a little south. Yeah, nice warm part of the world. And ju just by way of Definitely. background, you're a, you're a pretty fit uh, 34 year old bloke. And I think you're yeah. one of these surfer types, are you? Yeah, that would be correct. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely in this area you have to be. Sounds, um, sounds great fun. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of con just context on the health Please. before this. I um I used to sauna five to six days a week for about two years, um, and I would work out three to four plus days a week and run. So yeah, uh, I had a pretty good fitness schedule. You're basically <laughs> athletically fit. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and how, how tell me how your health is today? Um, so today I'm doing pretty good. Um, so we're I now on the twenty have... second of February, aren't we? Yes. So about three and a half months post, um, yeah. I think that's correct. Um, I only get a few palpitations at night. So like one or two times a day, it's rare now. Um, and they're, they're very mild. Um, and I have some heart pain or muscle pain in three locations. Um, and Just show if us I where try... the pain is, if you don't mind, Brendan. So I get it here. I actually get it under my arm, but here. And the worst one is just down there. So it's quite um, localized left-sided chest pain. Yes, yeah, and um, that those were actually the positions that sent me to hospital the second time, which was like um, a month and a half after, um, because I was having squeezing pains. But I'm skipping forward a bit there. Mm. But it's that area that is still sore. So that's sore now, but but you kind of point into it. So it's a fairly localized area that's that the pain's coming. Yeah, from. there under inside the armpit and these two lower regions mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah yeah and, and what do the palpitations feel like you kind of an, an awareness of your heartbeat or is it an irregularity of heartbeat uh you, you definitely you feel that like hard pump 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 and it and it picks up for a second and then it'll slow right down um and i do have a uh like a fitbit thing i got an apple watch now so i record mm. those myself um mm. And whenever it does happen, I get bad readouts. And then if I wait 10 minutes, I get a good good rhythm. But I do know this is only one point of contact, so they're not accurate, but mm. it is something. No, no, but it's yeah. that with the clinical features, isn't it, that you're experiencing? Yeah. It's very disconcerting, yeah. isn't it, when that happens? You don't quite know what's... Yeah, especially on. when I probably only had that happen four times in my whole life before this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm used to it now. <laughs> well, I know what yes, it is. Yes, yes. I wish I wasn't used to it, but it, yeah. it, indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Give it, let's go go for a bit of a timeline, Brendan, if you don't mind. So um, sure. you had, you had your first Pfizer vaccine. Roughly when was that? Uh, uh, thirty days before I had the second one no, on November sixth. So it might have been thirty one days before. Right. So, so thirty days. So it's it's only it's a fairly short time interval. Then it's about four weeks interval. Yeah, and that's when we're told to take the second one and after um, the first one you were fine felt nothing like obviously a little prick at the site but yeah sure. i forgot that i even had it yeah sure absolutely yeah. fine so you just went to normal duties normal exercise yep yeah. i went to normal sauna the next day i went back to normal running uh sorry mm -hmm. fitness yeah yeah sure yeah. and you had the second one when roughly november 6th i think is the date i have to check 6th, the paperwork right. yeah Take us through that day, Brendan, if you don't mind. What, 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 um, what time was the vaccine at? It was in the afternoon. Um, yep. It might have been about two o'clock. I yep. can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, I did actually ask. So you go into the GPs and you, you sit with the GP first and then they take you into the nurses um, and they ask you the usual questions, um, any heart issues, um, allergic reactions, et cetera, which I all, was all fine for. Um, I did ask to aspirate the needle. Mm -hmm. Um, and the GP said, oh, I haven't heard anyone ask that. I'll check with the nurse. Um, and the nurse had a document that was from the Australian government that was highlighted that said it's not necessary and can cause more harm to the person. Um, so I said, um, is, does that mean local harm on the site or harm from the vaccine? Um, because I would have been fine with a little extra pain. Sure. Um, and she just said, this is what the document says. So I said, I'll take your advice. Um, you're the health expert. So we didn't do that. Um, so the health experts are taking the advice from the government. 
Yes. Yeah. And, they're just uh, but we obviously doing got, their job. We think that yeah. which which of course you have basically at work you kind of have to do that. I had exactly the same problem with mine, but yeah, that, yeah. that's a separate issue. We believe the policy is wrong, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I wasn't going to argue. I just thought no, I'd I take know. their advice. Yeah. 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 So, um, so at the so, time it was okay. Felt yeah. Fine. So I had the I had the injection. You have to wait fifteen minutes. I felt fine. Um, yeah. I have no issues with needles or anything like that. Um, and then later that evening, um, when I went to sleep, so it probably would have been around. Uh, I got to bed pretty early. I'm kind of lame, so probably about seven thirty. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's, I, it's only about five six hours later. Yeah, I um, had really really bad upper back pain um, and as mentioned I've had spinal surgery but that's on my lower back so usually that's where I'm sore and it felt like it was through my lungs um, and that lasted all night but I just thought oh this is just like soreness from a vaccine because I've had vaccines before um, so this is the new pain this is different to some anything you've experienced before this is new pain yeah yeah um, up around my up around the lungs but on the back how bad was um, it? I mean, how, how bad was the pain out of 10? Was it sort of manageable or? It was manageable, but I didn't sleep. Yeah. Um, I was just like, yeah, this, this sucks. Um, mm, sure. But it, it was manageable. Um, the next morning, obviously, I was completely zapped. I felt really tired. Um, and I thought it just, was just because I hadn't slept. So I took the day off from exercising that day. Mm -hmm. um, the day after that, I went back to the gym and I hopped on the bike. And within the first minute of me trying to ride, it felt like I'd done about 20 minutes, like flat stick. I was just completely gassed. And I was kind of thinking, what is going on? So I slowed down a bit and I just did five minutes and I usually do 20 as a warm up. Mm. Um, and then I just did some really light knee rehab, um, but nothing cardio wise. And because I felt so flat and that was weird, I took another day off exercising. But here's where I made a mistake, which I didn't know was a mistake. The next day I went back to the gym and being someone who usually pushes through, if sure. you're feeling tired, you go, nah, we're going to get this you, done. You, you, you run through the pain, yeah. I, di I did that. I ran through the pain. I did my full cardio and I did my full um, upper body as well. And then I had a sauna, which I've had for the last two years every day. Sure. Um, I've, I've, I was obviously gassed through the whole thing. It was very difficult. You, um, because, and, you're you, because you're used to pushing yourself, you, you yeah, can kind I've, of run through that, can't you, and force yourself to do it. Yeah, yeah. Like being pretty experienced in the sauna, I know sure. when my max is. And yeah. um, I was tired, but I hadn't hit it. Hmm. Um, but that night is when things got pretty bad for me. Um, so about the same time when I, I was getting, like I was having trouble breathing. And then when I went to go to bed, I couldn't lie down because the, the weight on my chest was too much when I lied down and it made breathing even harder. My heart rate was really high. I didn't have a monitor at the time. Um, I bought that like a week after. Um, I was so this having is hours rough... after exercise, your heart rate was still really high. Really high. Like so if it, you're young and fit like... as you are, your heart rate would probably be about 50 when you go to bed. Yeah, definitely. I think mine was lower than that before. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it was like high 40s, maybe. And now we're probably talking about 100 or, or more. <sighs> yeah, I've, I'd had a recording of 160 once I got my Fitbit, which was a lot after. That was when I went to hospital December 27th again. So, yeah, it was really high. Um, and that's, I had pretty left... fr that's pretty frightening, isn't it? Um, so I was scared, yeah. Um, I had left arm pain um, all the way down, all the way like to my hands. Um, as I said, my chest felt tight. I was having palpitations. It just, it didn't feel like my heart was operating correctly. Like I'd never felt this before. I should have gone to hospital. Mistake number two. So I've you've got the chest thought, and the left arm pain, which is classic. Yeah. Yeah. I regret Eight not page going. one cardiac pain, isn't it? But of course, yeah. no one warned you about this. No. I mean, no. you're not a medical professional. Why, why should you know about this stuff? No, and now I know too much. <laughs> well, indeed. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that lasted the whole night. So obviously I had a shocker night. Um, it kind of went away by the morning um, and I sort of felt okay. Um, but then this persisted for the next like three to four days where I just felt completely gassed. My heart rate was super high. 
I couldn't focus. I was having left arm pains. My chest was heavy. Um, and then I took myself to hospital. It, it might have been four or five days after. I can't remember exactly. Um, so I you're wasn't pretty having... tough and you kind of hacked through it up till that point. Yeah, but um, the, the, the reason I went to hospital was because I, I got to the point where I, I got in my car to go down the coast and I went, I might have a heart attack. This is concerning. If I'm down the coast and no one can get to me, I'm in trouble. So sure. that's, how my, that's how concerned I was. So I went to hospital. I wasn't having major issues at the time. They ran every test they could on me. I did have to wait because I didn't say I was having major issues at the time, but that's on me. Um, so they, they did an X-ray, uh, an ECG. Is that the one where they put all the things yep. on you? Um, Electrocardiogram, took, yeah. And took my bloods. Um, the only thing was my heart rate was high in there. I think it was around, it might be on the paperwork, 120 or 140 or something. Um, I could have also been nervous in there too. So I was pretty well, scared well, at the well, time. Well, of course, of course. <clears throat> but, but, you know, 120, 140 is sli normally slightly more than nervousness and anxiety. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't tell anyone in the hospital that I'd had the vaccine five days earlier because I wanted to get treated for my symptoms. Sure. I know you're supposed to. At the end of all the tests, a nurse came in and said, is there anything else that you haven't told me? And I then told her and she said, you really should have told us that. Um, and she went and relayed that information as well. She was After probably that, thinking about drugs, you know, things like cocaine could do that, for example. Oh, yeah. They asked me that at the start and yeah. I said no. Uh, they also asked me if I had anxiety and I've never had it in my life. And my answer was I've never had it in my life. I'm very happy. I don't have a reason to have anxiety. Mm. Um, and they never asked me that again um, because it was pretty clear I was having problems. Well, th th I'm, I'm so pleased to hear that they treated this as a biological medical issue, not as a psychological issue, as, as has been reported, as you've probably seen on previous videos. Yes. Yeah. I am, and I feel very sorry for those people. Yeah. Um, that's it's already scary enough. Yes. And then to have that happen is it's not OK. Yes. yes. Um, so I got sent home and told I was fine because everything came back fine. I don't blame them for that. Um, well, apart from the but, fast heart rate, of course. Yeah. Um, but I knew I wasn't. Um, so immediately after that, I tried to book a meeting with my GP um, yeah. the, at the facility where I was vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get a meeting for about four weeks. So really? I, yeah, I dealt with this for about, I think, I don't have my timeline, about another week and a half. So and we're on for about in, 10 days, 14 days almost now. Right? And this was nonstop. Um, and it got to a point. So non, nonstop where, fast heart rate, nonstop pain. Yeah, nonstop pain, um, fast heart rate, um, heavy chest, couldn't breathe properly, obviously couldn't sleep. I'd have to sit up or most of the time I'd lie down sometimes. Um, I definitely could not lie on my stomach. I've only just been able to start doing that because the pressure would cause like kind of jolts and it would hurt um and i would find myself if i did go to sleep because i sleep on my stomach i would actually wake up in the middle of my night to a jolt i would just go boom and it would just immediately wake me up the pain would wake you up yeah yeah mm. yeah so yeah. um so that was happening for this whole time and it got to the point where this this bit's a bit tough it got to the point where I've, I'd written down all my passwords for all my bank accounts for my parents. Yeah. Just two seconds, John. No, no, it's no problem. So that's how scared I was uh, about potentially dying. It was getting pretty serious. So at that point, I, I called my GP and said, I need, I need a meeting immediately. Um, I'll take anyone, any cancellation. And I was lucky to get one for the next day, which was great. So I went in and I saw um, a new GP that I'd never seen before. And she was fantastic. Um, I walked in there and I explained all my symptoms. She'd seen the stuff from the ED. 
Um, and she had on her desk, after I explained my symptoms, this, which is the Australian government's myocarditis, pericarditis post-COVID vaccine PDF. She had that printed out and she said, you're the second person I've seen today and that's why I have this. And she's the one that got me the referral to the cardiologist. And she, I got another ECG done. I got bloods done again. And she was very adamant that I had to see the cardiologist. And I can't thank that lady enough for actually looking after me. That is correct um, medicine. I'm so pleased that you got that and weren't brushed off with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She anything really, less. she really brought me a lifeline. Um, and because I've heard from other people that have not had the same experience. Um, so after that, I, I called, I know you're supposed to wait for the cardiologist to call you, but I called them, I think that was a Friday. I called them first thing Monday to try and book. I called them Tuesday to try and book and I called them Wednesday. When finally I, I managed, because I needed to get an echocardiogram yep. before I saw the cardiologist. That makes sense. Um, I finally got to book a uh, echocardiogram, but I had to take a cancellation, which was in a different town. But I, was, I said, I will travel three hours for this. I don't care. I need this ASAP. Um, because the receptionist said she, there was no bookings until, so this was in December, there was no bookings to January 22nd because they were fully booked out. And she said to me on the phone, we could we used to not be able to give these away so that was another weird thing for me to hear um amongst all of this but they've gone the, the, so the echocardiography you've gone from having cups of tea all day to working yeah. completely flat out yeah so i don't know if that's a coincidence or if it's just what happens this time of year i'm not a health professional no it's, it's just what it's what i mean we were just reporting what they've reported you know. yeah yeah um so I managed to get that echocardiogram and thankfully that was my first hurdle. That came back pretty good, um, which was very pleasing. And that's when I saw the cardiologist for my first meeting. Um, and I explained, he asked me to explain all my symptoms the same as I'm explaining to you now. Um, and in that meeting, he actually told me at the end that I had severe pericarditis, but I later found out he'd written down myocarditis on the um, report. Um, so in that meeting, I was uh, told, obviously, to not exercise. Um, and my GP also told me this, stop exercising, don't do anything. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. which I didn't know about. <laughs> why, why should you? Um, why should you? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I saw the cardiologist. Um, he said, and I think this, this timeline for when I saw him, I'm probably seven weeks at this point. Um, and I was getting better. Um, so I wasn't as scared. Um, I didn't think I was going to die anymore, but I was concerned for the damage that had been done to my heart. I wasn't sure what it meant for my future. Um, and if I was going to be dealing with this forever, basically. Um, that meeting, I got cleared to start exercising very light. But by the cardiologist? Yes. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't prescribed anything then. So up until this point, the GP said to take um, two ibuprofen yeah. a day, um, twice a day. I think, so I think it was four. So I'd been taking that. Um, so I'd had no medication up until this point. Um, that was like two days before Christmas. So I spent Christmas with the family, felt, felt fine. Um, I had one uh, alcoholic beverage, like a little glass, and I don't drink, so I probably had... 10 drinks over two years <laughs> like as healthy as you can be um then boxing day i spent the day out in the sun um on a jet ski of my mates but i drank like four of those 1.25 liter bottles of water that night i felt a little weird my chest was sore the next morning i had uh, golf with my family and after the first hole my heart rate spiked to 160 and i was having like this was a new pain. I was having a squeezing pain that ended in like, it felt like someone was digging their nails in and it was in that location I said earlier and it was at the bottom of my heart. So it was squeezing and gripping and it was making me wince. So I was pushing this car and I was going <laughs> like that when it would happen and I got really concerned with that. Of course, it's terrifying, yeah. Because I'd just been cleared as well. So 
I, I, my mind was a little freer. I thought I, I'll, I'm going to be okay. So when this happened, I had a bit of a, a, a breakdown at this point because I thought I was okay. Um, and I went straight back to hospital um, because I had one of those incidents last like 30 seconds. And I was very nervous about that. Um, luckily this time the ED saw me straight away. Um, and I got, I don't know if he was a heart specialist, but he had a special heart sign on his shirt. Um, and he was brilliant. He spent so much time with me. He printed this same thing out again and gave it to me. He spoke to my parents. Um, he explained what was going on. I asked what I should be nervous of as per what is a heart attack. Um, and he said that these pains were probably the pericardial sac rubbing against the heart. Um, and that's why I had that tearing feeling. Yes. Um, and that I just, I needed to take it easy. And he prescribed me with colchicine, which is a gout medication. It is. It, it is. I, I mean, I'm not familiar with it. It's, it's like an anti-inflammatory that they've used for gout for years, but it seems to be yeah. effective against pericarditis. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm still on that. I, I right. have to take that for 12 weeks. I'm okay. almost at the end of it. And he, he prescribed me with six ibuprofen to three times a day which is quite and reasonable because that's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug so it, it is does have anti-inflammatory yeah. properties and he he gave me another thing for um stomach ulcers to, battle to, to cover that yeah some lands yeah. or something yeah yeah um yes and i forgot to add that um my cardiologist said the same thing that the gp said he said that he's seeing this much more than reported in young healthy fit males and i just said that's what i've heard too <laughs> now, I, 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 you've kindly sent your medical records, uh, Brendan, and I, I've read, yep. we can't name your cardiologist, obviously, it's confidential, but yep. you're, you, I, I've seen the diagnosis from your cardiologist saying you have uh, myopericarditis post-vaccine. Yeah. You have it an official cardiologist's diagnosis. Yes. Post-vaccine myopericarditis. That is, I, I've, I can't, I've read that and yes. I'm giving my word that I've read that yeah, I was shocked that it was written on there myself. I yeah. didn't think it would be. Yeah. Um, I think if this form didn't exist, the, the government PDF, it might mm. not have been. Mm. Um, yeah, it's almost that like that PDF has given the, 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 the doctor's permission to diagnose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was my, that hospital visit was my last severe bout um, and I got on the medication. Now... To treatment wise, besides what I'd been um, given by the doctors, the culture scene and the ibuprofen, I've always taken vitamins before this. So I take like um, vitamin B, K2, um, quercetin, magnesium for a day and night, uh, fish oil, um, curcumin, the turmeric powder one. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also added coenzyme Q10 because I looked mm -hmm. it up and found that it can help with heart. Um, so I, I take all of those things. I don't know if they've helped because I already took them prior anyway. It was just my natural thing, except for the coenzyme Q10. And I upped my turmeric uh, and fish oil consumption to help with the inflammation. <laughs> yeah, um, that makes sense, yeah, yeah. And obviously I drank a lot of water to try and stay hydrated sure. um no exercise um but then i saw your interview with kyle yeah. um and i followed him yeah. on instagram and saw that he got in the hyperbaric chambers right. so i booked in in perth recently and i've had three five sessions i'm booked in for seven but i saw significant improvements after session three interesting um, yeah. But, oh, sorry. That day I had a heart MRI as well. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, which came back clear um, very recently, a few days ago, which made that, that, me that's very... That's so reassuring, isn't it? Because that, 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 oh. that, that looks in great deal detail at the anatomy of the heart. So... Yeah. Yeah. That took a huge stress off me. Um, I was very scared for those results. Sure. Because I'd been told by the ED doc the second time that that tearing can cause scarring and scarring can cause um heart attacks and i was like oh okay no one told me this this is a problem <laughs> yeah um well, that, that's, so as, that's great news yeah yeah um as for the hyperbaric like i i don't know if it actually works but it has helped me a lot how long do you go um, in it for so you go in it for an hour and a half 
Right. Um, and I also do breathing techniques. Uh -huh. um, I was having lung issues too, but they were nothing compared to the heart. It, you know, if I tried to take deep breaths, it would skip. I would be like, like that. I couldn't get a clean breath. Um, that could be related to the pericarditis potentially. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure what it was and it was a lot less concerning than yeah. what was happening with my heart. Um, the pain's catching I, you when you breathe in, that can actually be the pericarditis. Yeah. And um, because I do breath work like every morning as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. yeah, an hour and a half in the hyperbaric chamber. Um, and I would do some breath work in there as well, but it also, it could be that it puts you in such a calm state as well yeah um, yeah 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 and i was in such a stressful state and i was doing everything i could to get out of that state meditating breath work and i yes. just couldn't um and my body just felt completely off um yeah. and it just couldn't get rid of those issues and since then i had got some blood oxygen uh levels before that and i was sitting anywhere from 92 to 94 and these aren't super accurate but since going in that chamber I've gone back up to consistent 98, 99 every day. Um, and also my variable heart rate, the one that uh, in between the beats, I think the description is. Yeah, yeah ectopic, whole, ectopic beats. Yeah, that was sitting at about 17 to 24 the whole time, which is horrible. Um, and since the hyperbarics, it's gone back to 55, 34 range. So, right, so, so uh, before this, you were getting palpitations basically all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of ECG readouts from the Fitbit I had that are really bad. I've probably got like 40 of them. But I only got that Fitbit a week or so or two weeks after it started happening because yeah, I said yeah, yeah. to myself, like, I need to know my heart rate. I need to get these readouts because I might go to the hospital again and it won't be happening and they're not going to get a readout. That's, that's um, right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I guess that's pretty much the whole story. Um, it's just a most appalling, terrifying experience. That's a very good, that's a very good word, John. Um, I can't stress enough. I've had people try to tell me that this is mild. <laughs> people that no. haven't had it happen to them. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I've had spinal surgery before um, and I recovered from that. And this compared to that, this was so much worse. This was mentally just terrifying and draining and also physically draining. Yeah, so, and, and, and the anxiety. I mean, you have anxiety because of the, because of any condition, of course, you have anxiety. But yeah. I, I think when you start interfering with your circulatory system and your brain's not getting an irregular blood supply and, and the brain is getting an irregular blood supply, that, that causes like a biological anxiety, which is way worse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that generates what, what, what you described there, that, 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 that pain when you wrote your passwords down, that, that, that mental torture, it, it's called a feeling of impending doom. Yeah, that wasn't in, fun. In a, it's a, it's yeah. actually a, a recognised medical phenomena um, that people, yeah. y y your body, or, your body kind of, your brain knows that there's something severely wrong. Yeah. And, and I, you, do, you do feel that you're about to die. And, and um I thought I, I, what I was going through, I thought if this gets 10% worse, I think that's it. I was very close because I didn't know how bad it could get. So I was at the point where I was like, my body can't handle any more of this. Um, that's where I was at when I was in that mind, mindset. Sorry, it's a bit hard to talk about that. <laughs> um, Brendan, you are, you, you are exhibiting nobility doing this. This is just... In, it, yeah, it's just it, um, it, it is so difficult. It's one of the reasons why I want I, I reached out to you because uh, I, I'm sure some of these cases are mild for people, um, <clears throat> but for me, it absolutely was not. It wasn't even close. Um, so it needs it needs to be understood that this is really bad, um, and I'm hoping to make a full recovery, and I should, and I'm so grateful for that. But I might not have. It wasn't looking good for a bit there. Um, and it's it could one of the be main reasons why to do these. There's people around around suffering. Yeah. Who don't recognize yeah. what this is. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone that I've spoken to in person and has been able to look at me has understood it hundred percent. And and most people have said, Oh my God, um, I've heard about this, but now that I'm speaking to you and I know you, 
this is real. Um, but if it's, I, I try to engage pretty much never online, but if I write something somewhere and someone comments on it that is really rude, I will just try to explain my story. Um, and it's that that's disappointing to see the lack of compassion when someone's trying to explain what has happened to them. Um, I'm not sure where that stems from exactly. It could be some sort of news articles, but it's sort of, yeah, it or, needs to be recognised. Or, or some people just like to have a kind of denial on your behalf, you know, that, yeah. that they don't want yeah. to recognise their own fragility, their own vulnerability, their own mortality. Yeah. I mean, I understand that most people that have taken it have been fine. Um, and I know that some people should absolutely take it that are older and have comorbidities. Um, it's probably a good idea. But I also knew that I was kind of running a risk being young, healthy and fit and male. Um, for and you're pretty thin. You're pretty thin and muscular as well, aren't you? I don't know if that's... Oof, I don't know about muscular, but... No, you're, 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 you're pretty thin. Yeah. I mean, you're certainly not overweight. No, I'm definitely not overweight. I'm trying to put weight on. So. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. I have, which I have problem. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, Adam, who we interviewed recently, he, he was young and fit, keen skater. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle, of course, was a mountain bike national champion. Very fit. Like a mega athlete, you know. Uh, yeah. But, but, yeah. but you're in that category. You're a pretty serious athlete. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was running a lot, and surfing mm. and working out and the sauna. Ugh, mm. Man, the sauna helped me so much before this. It was but, insane. I, yeah. Are, are you allowed to exercise now? What's your cardiologist told you? Yes. So the last meeting I had, which was a few days ago, where I got the MRI results and they came back clear. Um, he has said, finish the culture scene. Obviously, you have to do the 12 weeks. 12 weeks. Um, yeah. And then slowly start exercising, which I have been doing. So I'll do like a minute of some cardio and then I'll check my heart rate. And if it goes above 120, I just wait and I get it back down into the 80s. And then I'll go again. Because I have a mental hurdle that I also have to get past of trusting this again. Yes. This used to be the thing that I could rely on when I was running or anything. It, yeah. it wasn't going to fail me. Um, so now I have to slowly build through the mental side of being able to trust my heart um, and know that it's not going to fault. Yes. And also just check every day, am I better or worse? And just go really, really slow back into fitness. So the, tre the trend at the moment, so, so when was this? This is November. So we're November, yep. December, January, we're, we're like three and, three and a half months yep. now. Uh, yep. uh, and you, you feel confident now that the, the, the trend is improvement? Yes, I'm pretty confident, especially after getting the MRI results that were the thing I was concerned about. Why, why was I still having pain, like mm. physical pain? Um, that was my last concern and I'm pretty confident I will make a full recovery over time. Um, the first two weeks were hell, just horrible. Unbelievable. Week two to four was still really bad. And then I had all those issues up to week seven, but the first two were the, the scary ones. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And um, you described the sort of limit, the, the, the limited pain you've got now, the chest pain you've got now. Is it there all the time or is it intermittent? <laughs> no, it's there all the time. It, it oh, feels yeah. like muscle soreness. Like if you've gone to the gym and you've done a big chest workout, um, at, but it's only on this left side in those positions. Um, so the cardiologist actually said I should go and see someone who's a specialist in body autonomy, like a chiropractor or something. Okay. And I do, I do know someone who worked on my spine and the nerves being um, all interlined after that yeah. and he fixed me up so i've already booked in to go see him i sh actually i should note i figured out how much this has cost me and i'm a little over three and a half thousand dollars in medical bills so not only is it a mental toll it's also a monetary toll but it, indeed, uh, indeed. yeah yeah and, and i'm lucky enough that i work for myself so i worked through this whole thing but I'm a web developer, but I was only able to work for like an hour a day before I just mentally couldn't cope. Anymore. So the loss of income is probably more than that. Yes, I haven't included that in that. I had to push back a bunch of jobs I'd already had contracted in. Yeah, then I was fortunate enough that those people understood what I was going through and allowed that. I mean, if you've had an official diagnosis, well, regardless of whether you've had an official diagnosis, but especially because you've had an official diagnosis, 
There really yeah. should be some sort of compensation scheme for that, shouldn't there? I mean, it's. Uh, I know it's a minor <laughs> issue compared to the physical suffering and mental suffering you've been through, but. Yeah, yeah, I've said this to someone before. I, I'll take any money I can get. You'd be stupid not to. Um, but I would rather have my healthy heart back. Absolutely. That's, that's what I would prefer. Yeah. Um, and yeah, moving forward, I, I'm currently applying for a, a booster exemption because that terrifies me. Um, and the, having the idea of happened, giving you another another mRNA vaccine terrifies me. I just completely and utterly, totally terrifies me. Yeah, the, I'm sure, your cardiologist to the point where I'm laughing at it. About, yeah. Um, well, he can't. I asked. Um, he just, can't just a minute, just a minute, your cardiologist, this is a cannot. consultant cardiologist, Yes. can't give I you a, a vaccine exemption. No, I asked him in the last meeting. He said he can't do that. Um, and he also hasn't reported it because that's not his job. So then I booked in for my GP afterwards and I asked her and she said she can't do it either, but she showed me the correct documentation online that I need to fill out. So I have submitted my own adverse event report yesterday. Um, and printed out the form I need to send off to get an exemption. So it wasn't, didn't fall within the remit of either of these doctors to, to, to file the, the adverse event report? No, which is what really shocked me. So we can assume uh, that we can assume, or, or it's look, we, we can't assume, but it's possible yes. that many people around Australia are suffering who don't have the uh, literary and technical ability that you have to do this report have simply not reported it. Because the, doctor, the, doc, the doctors aren't reporting it. Correct. The cardiologist said it might have been done in my first ED appointment. Uh, sorry, um, hospital when I went in the first time. But I said yeah. I got sent home as fine. So yeah, I highly so doubt it's it. Un, it's unlikely, yeah. yeah so, so, um, so your general practitioner, practitioner, a consultant cardiologist, can't give you a vaccine exemption. And it's not yep. doesn't fall within their remit to file an adverse events report. That's what I was told by both that of them. That is unbelievable. Yes. I was pretty shocked. Um, but it's just unbelievable. The, the GP did, in her defence, really go to great lengths to find out what I needed to do. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it's yeah. these people's fault by any yeah. means. Yeah. It, it's, it's clear they're clearly following the protocol. Um, yeah. So, but consultants um, should be free to do whatever they want, whenever they want. That's what I thought, but, but yeah. basically. <laughs> so that was disappointing. Um, yeah, and also, really? if I get the exemption, it's only for six months, I think. Um, so it's just a plan till I have to get my next one, which I'm not doing. There's oh. just no way I can go through that again. Yeah. Just... I would take another one that isn't mRNA if I had to, um, as long as there were tests done that people who had suffered from myocarditis or pericarditis had taken that and still being fine. Well, you're I'm a not braver man than me, Brendan. I don't think I would. I don't need it. <laughs> I mean, I'm we, we, sure. we, we can't we can't give medical advice on this channel, obviously. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I, I've actually dealt with vaccine side effects at various times in my career, and if someone's had an adverse reaction to one vaccine, you would not even consider. Um, I, th I thought that's how medicine giving works, a further dose of, of, of anything. Yeah, and that's part of the medicine. problem now. You, you know, we've got this kind of one size fits all policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we need to get back um, to individualized individualized medicine and of course omicron is, is, is tearing through your community as we speak yeah um, very unrecognized so I, i'm very i would strongly suspect you will be exposed to omicron yeah and, and that yeah, will give you a natural sure. immune boost yeah i'm pretty sure it's oh, funny it because sure it i was i was in the category of least likely to suffer from omicron young fit healthy sure but now that i've had heart issues i'm in the top category <laughs> the, so the, irony, ironic. the irony has not escaped me brendan at all yeah yeah um yeah that one that one hit home <laughs> yeah yeah but i yeah brendan do but, do, do do um keep us informed we'd love to yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow, um, follow your progress. And it does sound like you are m making progress now, but you've, you've had the worst experience of your life. Definitely, yes. Um, yeah, that was one of the reasons to go on here was to, I know a lot of people that probably have had this happen would watch you and listen and they follow Kyle and that. And mm. any advice on like what he said about the hyperbaric has helped me. So I thought I'm in a state where I can talk about this now and I'm in a state where I'm getting close to healthier. This might help someone. 
Um, that's I, I will I go further than that. I'm certain this will help many people. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's it's um, I mean, it, it, it sounds a bit melodramatic, but the word is noble. You've done a noble thing by sharing this. It's it's <sighs> it, yeah. it, it really yeah. is. It really is impressive what you've just done. Uh, you gave us the platform, John. I appreciate it. Well, you're the one that suffered, Brendan, not me. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, Thank you uh, very much. We, we look we look forward to talking again with, with good news, Brendan. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. you have a good day. Thank, thank you, Thanks. Brendan. Thank you.